How do? No mic today, guys. Something a bit different. Radcliffe Elite Amateur Boxing Club. Contact AD Lewis. I'll get the number on. There you go. I'm going to be interviewing AD. He's got a story to tell. Ex British champion and Commonwealth champion. He holds a Lonsdale belt. He's got a Lonsdale belt. And I believe he holds a record for the smallest boxer ever to win a title at his weight. I'm going to go into the gym now. Just a little bit of a preview and then I'm going to interview him in my studio. Here we go, Radcliffe Elite. This is a proper old school boxing gym. Let me tell you now, AD, he's been at it a long time with his mate. They've had various his premises, they hope this is gonna be a success. They've spent some money here, they've put some graft in, new windows, they've got some sponsors, they are looking for sponsors, and away we go. There is some lads in here training, so we'll try not to disturb them. Keep moving, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. <laughs> Come on in, AD. Let's have it. Here we go. Love it. Loving it. In here, mate, get yourself yeah. sat down in the gaffer's chair. <laughs> right, tell me about it, kids. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are. There's um, too many kids on computers, on the phones all, all the time. There's not enough exercise going on, which, um, which the mind needs and the body needs, you know. You sat at home, you just messing about on computers and all the rest of it. You need to be active, uh, which, which is what the boxing club is. And there's other things, isn't there? there's youth clubs, football clubs. Yeah, of course Everything, there is. It doesn't matter what it is, I think you need to do something. Um, Otherwise, you know, they, they get, get you fat, you know, which is no good, obviously, for your health, for your heart, um, for your mind. I think, I think your mind's most of it, because a lot of people are struggling with uh, mental health, aren't they, these days? Yeah, of course they are. Of course um, they are. And, and I just don't think sitting at home on computers and all the rest of it is any good. You need to be out and associate with people, speak to people, you know, um, learn off people. You know, I don't think you're learning off computers. You need to be actually active, talking to people in uh, real life situations. Give somebody some purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, let, let, let's tell, so if, if someone wants to come along to here, you don't mess about, do you? No, I don't mess about. Like I said, I, I said to you before, you know, I've said to many kids, coronation streets, I've said, if you don't want to see boxing, you're in the wrong place. You know, it's not a youth club, it's somewhere we're trying to learn you here, we're giving up our time. We want you to do the best. And the most thing in my life, if I've got a kid there and I make him into a world champion, that would be the best thing that can happen to me. Never mind the lad that I'm training, which would be the best thing for them as well. So it works both ways. The trainers want as much as the boxers, you know, but the boxers want to, need to want as much as we do as well. And if they do that, you've got a winning for me, haven't you? But you, you'll accept anyone here. Yeah, well, You've got to come someone. along, put the graft in. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me if you're Mike Tyson or you, you know, you, you're nothing else. You, you know, you're never going to be a boxer. But as long as you're here, you're trying, you're giving it all, you, you're giving it everything you've got. You know, that can steady you well in, in, in later in life and anything you want to do in working and all that. You know, because you, you don't get anything without trying. And if you don't try it, you'll never be able to do it. Yeah? Hey, Dave. Yeah. A pleasure, mate. No problem, Sam. Nice one. Hey, Dave. Shows the silverware or goldware, as yeah. it were, mate. Do you want to pick it up? I do. Yeah. Tell everyone what it yeah. is, that how you get it. And what it means to you? Uh, this is a Lonsdale belt. Uh, Lord Lonsdale started uh, boxing, so obviously that's why it's so prestigious. It's a British title. 
Uh, to get this, you've got to uh, defend it or win it three times. So if you won it and defended it twice at that time, I think it's defended it three times now. But when I won it, I defended it twice. And obviously, I won it in Scotland, I defended it in London, and I won it in Liverpool outright. Um, obviously, it means a lot to me this. Um, it's the most prestigious belt in boxing in my eyes, and even the most of pros and uh, world champions will tell you that as well. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I quite think, valuable. Yeah, it's quite valuable. But it's, you can't, I, can't put a, I, I wouldn't sell this for anything. No, it's no, kept I, in a safe place. Yeah, it's kept in a safe place. That's for my dad. So, yeah. So, yeah, 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 obviously, yeah. I, I, would, I would never ever, ever dreamt of selling this because it means too much. I mean, you remember what he did to get there. Uh, everything you had to do to, to win it and defend it and keep hold of it. So it means too much to give away. Yeah. Hey, the top yeah. man, well impressive. No problem. Thanks, Sam. Cheers, Cheers dude. How do? All right, all right, Sam. Yeah, this this is AD. Um, if you want to come on the channel, guys, you got a story. You don't have to have been to prison, don't have to have been involved with drugs or anything else. This young man, younger than me, <laughs> yeah, uh, going to tell his story today. AD is a fighter, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, well, boxer, yeah, yeah, the boxers are fighters, aren't they? So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, let's talk about you being uh, a young lad. Uh, what age can you start boxing? Well, when I was younger, he was 11 year old because uh, my uh, coach was like old school where you'd have to be 11 and that was it. And obviously, at, at nine or eight, I probably looked at about seven. Um, so I had to sit there and watch for three years whilst my brother were training. You went with your brother? Yeah, because my dad took us both down because he was always fighting all the time. He went in the house just to just to burn our energy off, really, because of my practice anyway. And so, so we went in, and but uh, he was only interested in my brother because he was like 11 at the time and I was eight. Yeah. And I so I had to stand and watch. For three years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it makes you more determined then, doesn't it? You know, when you've been told you can't do something, you want to do it, don't you? Yeah. So, so three years after three years, you you, you get to to fight. How did that go? Yeah, pretty well, pretty well. But the first fight was all right. I won my first fight fight by stoppage in the first round. That was in Berry actually. And how old were you then? I was about eleven, nearly twelve, probably at the time. Because you don't just go straight into it. You've got to train for about a year, say to show how you they want you to box. Right, it's not a street fight. It's a boxing match, isn't it? So you've got to put you into the style, don't they? Which you know, they want you to be. Is this amateur level? This is amateur level, yeah, yeah. What is the difference between amateur and pro? Um, when, amateurs when, is when more. They, they're looking more for point scoring, whereas the professionals, they're more sitting down on your punches more. They're not moving about as much, and you got to really stand and trade because as a professional, if you wasn't going to stand and fight, you won't get any fights. So, was your size a disadvantage? It probably was more so in the amateurs than the professionals because um, if the three rounds you can get away from me, the twelve rounds is different. Sooner or later I can catch you, you know, try and slow you down, get to your body, and work you out really. So, so do you mind me asking how tall you are? Five foot one and a half. Five foot one. They do say I'm four foot eleven and a half on the telly, but I'm five. Really? When I was eighteen, I was that's what that's what I was four foot eleven and a half, but yeah. I did grow. <laughs> I did grow, obviously. I did grow up to five, five foot one and a half. I might have shrunk now and got a bit older. But <laughs> so I ain't checking it again, but yeah, yeah. So how long were you amateur? And you said that they didn't like you as an amateur. Why didn't they like you? They just didn't like my style. I, um, obviously, I couldn't jab and move. I'm not going to out jab anyone. Um, so You're I, not going to have more reach than anyone, No, are that's you? what I'm saying. So so they just didn't like I had to go and hurt somebody, if you like, try and, try and knock them out to get me the victory because if I didn't do that they was jabbing me into little little jabs as much as a big left hook and it's still a point so but I did do quite pretty well as a and I went to 142 out of 50 so you know it's not, not too bad in your head did you think I've got to knock them out yeah because I just didn't think I'd get the decision um, and it, plus that my heroes were Mike Tyson Nigel Ben the come forward fighters you know Rocky Marciano people like yeah. that they're the people I, I like to watch. And you emulate your heroes, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. And that's what I did. So, so yeah. how long were you amateur boxer for? Um, From 12, 12, 12 till 18. I turned pro at 18. And what's um, that involve, exactly? 
in which, in which way? What, what is it? What's what is the diff? I know, know the difference in boxing styles, but when you when you turn pro, yeah. Well, the the, the, the rounds are longer, aren't they? You've got no top one. Your head guard, head guards have gone. Um, is is it a decision about uh, money, career? It, it wasn't so much about money at the time because I was living in my dad's. It was just I just liked professional boxing and I just liked the way he did score for people like me. You know, if I was trying to knock you out, even if I couldn't, I'd probably still get the fight because I'm trying to force a fight rather than trying to, you know, defend myself and move away. I am trying to fight. We were quite determined then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to fight, you know, so you, you can find it in the professionals. Well. What was your life like away from boxing or was it your life? It probably was my life. Like, like, um, for for British style, I think it was five grand between two of us, so two and a half grand each without them taking the money out. So, you, I, if I were with my dad's, I probably wouldn't have been able to survive anyway. When did you fight first fight for the British title? Twenty one. Twenty one years 21, old. Yeah, yeah. And that was the purse five grand between between two of us. It was a voluntary title. Somebody gave up the title. Or I think they did fight for a world title. So yeah. And yeah did you win that? that? Yeah, I won that in Scotland. Yeah, I won uh, 12 rounds of weather for that one in Scotland. It was a close fight. I didn't box that well, but I still won. <clears throat> Explain. It, was that a British title fight? Yeah. Yeah, that was a British title fight. And how many times did you defend that? I defended it twice after that. So you had to have three British title wins, and which I did. I, I defended it in London. Um, Marriott Hotel, I think it was, against Mark Reynolds. And that was another 12-round fight. And then after that, I fought Peter Coulson. And then... Um, he knocked me down in the first round and I stopped him in the eighth. Um, so that was probably the best night. Were you the favourite <laughs> in all them fights? Um, in my head, I was. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, it's true, isn't it? That, that's the truth. No, no, it? Because listen, I wouldn't be there if I didn't believe No, that. you, yeah, quite yeah, definitely, you've got to back yourself. I don't think in the last fight, but I definitely had the Vince because they're well known in Liverpool. <clears throat> and um, he just won a Commonwealth title. Um, so I don't think I was his favourite there, but I won. Mm. And how long did your career last? Um, I retired 27. Um, to be honest, I wasn't living right. Um, so called friends and all that, they were not here anymore. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't um, do as well as probably I could have. Do you think you could have gone longer? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. If it had put my head down more, and I trained hard. On the fights, but it's in between time. You have too much time in between. Yeah. And then, in, and then there was, you know. Is is it having someone to guide you? Yeah, a bit, because um, he never had that really. No, not in them days. Nobody really looks after you. And the uh, professional box anyway. I don't. I don't think they do anyway. <clears throat> like that, Sheryl McClellan. You got that braid and just get now Ben. Yeah. He's he's got no money now, and he's in the in the kip house in uh, America and. I know it's looked after him, you know, all the money they made, Frank Warren and Dan Donkin and that. Yeah. Yeah, the, so. The, you, you would think the, the money is in boxing at a big level. They, they'd be they'd be something to look after people. You well, they should, yeah. I think, there, I think there is now, isn't there? Something now that there is now with football and everything else, isn't there? But in them days, I don't know, you still have to look after yourself, really. Um, which, they have no guidance. Do you think he's missing out on youth? When you, are, are you disappointed? When you said that, then that you could have gone longer, and it's the lifestyle away from boxing that, because I know I'll ask you after. <clears throat> I, I know a lad who um, probably got to a similar level to you yeah. at twenty one, yeah, and then he discovered nightclubs yeah. and mm. women, and yeah, yeah. It, it's very dedicated. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. Boxing's hard. You're on your own, aren't you? There's no one else there, so you've even up for the working. You can't get it out, can you? You know, so I don't know. Um, it's the way it goes, isn't it? If, 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 if I turned about now, if I knew now what I knew, knew then, it'd be a different story, but you can't put a hold, an old dad on young shoulders, can you? So, yeah, but you achieve something that not, not oh, a lot no. of people. Yeah, I'm not knocking that. And that's what I'm still in the sport. I love the sport a bit, but like I say, there's no guidance really in the days. Did you fight for a Commonwealth title as well? Yeah, that's, that's when. Is I, that beyond when, British title? It's the same level, they used to call it British Empire, didn't they? Back in the day when Henry Cooper won it and all that. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I think that because of the belt of the British Isle, I think that's maybe just just a step above the Commonwealth Isle. But, yeah. but you can find like obviously people from Australia in in the Commonwealth, can't you? Um, I never really defended that title because um, I, I give up when I fought for European title at flyweight. Yeah, I got beat in that, and I was struggling to make the weight. Um, just killing myself, you know, just to make the weight. So I gave up that. Went up and moved up to bantamweight. weight. So, and how did you do there? Yeah, I did all right then. I won a British title then, British and Commonwealth title. Uh, you become vacant that title again, and I fought something called Fancy from and Paul for, um, in Bethnal Green, and I won that one on points. So you've you've held titles at two weights. Yeah, two weights. Yeah. And what is the difference in lightweight? What what is the weight? But the first one, flyweight, is eight stone. The bantamweight weight is eight stone six. Wow. So it's it's a it's a lot of weight that, to a small guy. You know what I mean? Do you think you, know, you, you think people that probably like yourself, what six pounds? It's a lot. Because you down, you down. <laughs> what, what are you saying? No, no, but I'm just no, a, yeah, the average quite person. They, say, but you, they just said to me, I'm a big shit, and you can't. But that's wrong. You know, I mean, it's not like that. Yeah. Because you down to your last. But I, I really, my ideal weight would have been eight stone three, which was it's is out now, but it wasn't out then. It's called so super in between. Fly. Really, so yeah. three pounds. Three pound would have made a massive difference. Massive. So I was in between. I was in between flyweight and bantamweight, and at the time there was no super flyweight there is now. Is there a minimum weight as well? There is a straw weight, but that's in world boxing, which all the Japanese do with more than Chinese. No, what, what I mean is, if if you were, if you couldn't, could you afford a eight stone at bantamweight? No. Well, do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you probably could, but you're not going to have any chance here. That six pound, you wouldn't believe how much. How well. Much, how much different it's something I've not thought about now but yeah. I'm actually thinking like honestly six pound to me doesn't seem a lot no and it doesn't probably average put person, that on in a weekend or lose it to the average person it doesn't but they, we're down to our last there's nothing on us at all you know we're, we're even dehydrating ourselves to, to make the weight you're not drinking for two days yeah so well, I'd put ten pound on I'd, I'd be weighing say seven stone three and three quarters just under the limit then I'd be eight stone ten on the day 24 hours 24 hours you put 10 pounds is that yeah. all water weight yeah it's just anything you just, your body's just grabbing it, isn't it you're not used to it that's quite brutal that isn't it yeah yeah but th th I suspect they're still all doing it now I think they know more about diets than they did in my day because um, I just used to think starving yourself and that's what I did but there's it it not the, the right things to eat in there rather than starving yourself yeah um, which obviously I didn't learn that and nobody told me that I know uh, what do you call them what do you call me? Coach. Not not a coach, but I mean nutrition, nutrition. dietitian. Yeah, dietitian. You know, I'd done of them in the day. Um, so did you just do your own thing? Well, basically, yeah, yeah. Well, your coach is not telling you what to eat. Well, they're advising you, but they probably they probably faint if I told them what I was actually eating. <laughs> I was actually eating next to nothing, but a lot of it again was my own fault because I'd go up a lot in between fights, so I'd come back to the gym about nine stone twelve, and I was to get down to eight stone. Wow, that is a lot. Yeah. You're, you're talking about eight stone, eight stone three, yeah. and eight stone That's six, I mean. and then you're telling yeah. me you yeah, had but, to... But yeah, you had to go up. I think I went up to about ten, 10 stone four once, and I'm going to get back on to eight stone. There's a lot of controversy at the minute in the fights, such as UFC and that with these weight cuts, because yeah. there's yeah. been some absolutely shocking pe people coming in who made weight looking... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not good. It's, it's the one thing that puts me on boxing is that you know, you know, when I retired, about two years later, I think, so then I think, I can't do that anymore. You know, I can't starve that anymore. Too much. <clears throat> it is. You know, it's too much. Right, so you retired at 27. Yeah. W what is your passion now? Still boxing. Still boxing, you know, because I've run the gym since then. Um, I've had about four or five different places, but I always... You know, how how long have you been in the gym business? Because... I'm going to do a little video where we are now. Uh, I'll show you AD's right hand man, where it is. You know, if you want to, what 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 age what ages do you deal with here? From eight upwards, from eight upwards. So they can't start to box till the ten, and they've got to be skilled fights where there's no winner, no loser. Um, and then I think that now it's up to forty year old now, where you can re that way. That's it, that's it for the amateurs. Uh, but yeah, from any of them ages, and we've got people older than that who just want to come just for the fitness anyway. It's not just about, we don't just say you've got to get in there and fight. 
a lot of people do boxing for fitness only, just for, for the mind, yeah, more than anything do. else, you know what I mean? And, and obviously the health, the body, everything. So how long have you been running gyms? Ever since I finished boxing myself, because there's a place in Radcliffe where I was going in between times, you know, when, when I never fight, I'd just go and do a bit of training there. It was like, it's like a weight type of gym, and we had like cardio machines in there, which I just went and used. And they did, when I finished, they just said, there's a few kids in here who want to do a bit of boxing. He said, do you fancy doing a bit of training? I said, all right, yeah, I'll do it. All about the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep the kids off the street. And and I have done really, I think, for the last 20 years, for well, 20 years and more, you know, with some help with people like McCaslam, Dale Ely, Liz Norris, a few others. Um, we've, all, we've, we've helped keep kids off the street, which is good, you know. And how long have you been in the premises you're in now? Not long. We've only started, um, we started in January. We actually got the place about, three months before January uh, last year. I mean, it was a lot of work to be done. Um, I'd say Mick Haslam did most of the work here. Did loads of it. Dale, like you met before, he yeah. did a lot of work here. Yeah, um, yeah there's, there's been, there's been a, a group effort and a lot of the dads, you know, the kids' dads and all that, because they didn't want to see us go by. Marcus Jeffries gave up his a bit of money and all that to get new windows. It's been, a, it's been a, you know, helped by everyone, which is good, you know, to see, like, the care. Because a lot of their kids box was they thought, yeah, we don't want them to fold. No, nah, we know we want listen, to it's all going. about the kids, you yeah. know me, um, getting them off the streets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. Exactly, giving them something to do. You know, if you've got aggression as well, boxing's a perfect place to come. Yeah. Would, would you? Are you looking for sponsors or...? Well, it's all, any help's going to help, isn't it? You know, you know I, I always say, we promise we'd want, we, it's not for us, we won't spend it. It's for the kids. We'll put it back into the kids and, you know, if they've got uh, new bags there, they're happy, aren't they? They've got new balls or new gloves, new gum shields, anything, head guards. Yeah. There's loads of things that people don't realise you've got to pay for. Like even kits, you know, when you go in boxing and different shows and all that, and uh, boxes, boots, socks, there's a lot, you know, just, just to get going and keep going and just to make, make them look good and look the part, really. Because you've got a kid, you know, he's, he's not, not so well off, they're for the working class family. Sometimes they need a bit of help, don't they? Um, the, the family can't afford it, so if somebody can put some money in, quite definitely, it's always an help. And you work full time as well, don't you? Yeah, you work yeah, full time yeah. to pay your bills. This yeah. is a, yeah, a this proper is, passion, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a passion. It's a part. I don't. I wouldn't know what to do without boxing. I wouldn't know what to do because I've always done it, you know. So yeah, I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll always be here and we'll keep going. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think you should have any regrets. No, I don't have regret, regrets, it's just, I, I do not, I, you, I don't look back, that's why I keep busy. Yeah. You know, I think people who look back and then they, they, get, they start getting depression and all that, which so I won't do that. <clears throat> my, my main thing, if I can get a kid to do a lot better than what I did, I'll be happy. Uh, and I look back and think, yeah, you know what, I built him, or her even. Well, girl or something. in 20 years, girls I'm sure you've helped a lot of kids, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. You know, I see I see when you're walking down Berry or whatever, you, and you, they say, ah, you used to coach me, but I can't remember them because, like, there was kids then. Yeah. I don't change, but they do, don't they? Because like, yeah. they might be 13, 14, and now they're 27, 28. Yeah. So, obviously, they remember me. Sometimes I can't remember them because there's how many kids coming in and out all the time, you know? So, Yeah. But we're enjoying it, it's good. Even more so now with the new premises. Yeah. We're gonna have a look around the premises. Yeah. Is is there anything you'd like to add? Um no, just um uh, just hope the gym keeps going well as it is and you know, um we keep going to shows and we're having our own show soon. Um we're just trying to find a place a big enough to, to hold it really. So yeah. So, so people get an idea of what you do then. So, obviously, you're training youngsters and that. Um, do you take kids from your gym? Have you got lasses as well? We've we've had women boxers before. We are trying to get more women boxers. You could, I'd like to advertise that more. Oh, because, quite definitely. We'll do all know, that. Yeah, because I do, I do, I do want more women boxers in here. Because yeah, because I quite like the women boxing. Um, I think there's more skill in the women boxing, and I think they sit down and they listen. And I've seen, I've seen quite a few, a lot of boxing shows, you know, like the amateurs, and they're quite good. They're quite good, skillful, they're quite good. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to see more women into it. Yeah, I think they're quite good. In the pinned comment, I'll put the address of this gaff. Um, so you can try and find it. We're, we're actually, is it an Asda just there? Yeah, an Asda, yeah. yeah. Where the big Asda is in Radcliffe, 
road to the side is just along there, right? Yeah, Science Street, yeah. Off Science Street, yeah. So anyone interested, anyone that would like to sponsor, uh, what's he called, his gym? Radcliffe Elite Boxing Club. Radcliffe Elite Boxing Club. Anyone who'd like to bring the kids, anyone who'd like to bring lasses, or there's any women that would like to come along, then everyone's more than welcome. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like I said, I'll film the outside, we'll go inside and have a look round, and... Uh, Hopefully you'll get some help. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, most appreciated. Thanks hey, a lot. Yeah, nice one, Sam. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks for coming.